Oh, hi. My name is Bill. Uh, I'm from the United States, and I've been traveling in Colombia for the past week. Uh, Just as you can find a new adventure and a new love after your first marriage, so can you find a new life in a foreign land. For me, for now, it's South America. My name is Lauren Lau, and this is my adventure in Grand Colombia. got here last Tuesday. Um, I arrived in Medellin and I spent uh, three days in Medellin and then I took the bus from Medellin to Pereira which uh, was an interesting experience. Um, I'm not sure I want to do that again but I'm glad I did just to have that uh, experience for myself to understand what it was. Um, got to see a lot of the country which was nice. Got to see the Andes Mountains and and the coffee plantations and things like that. And then the last couple of days I've been in Pereira and I planned this trip, uh, gosh, like six, eight months ago I, I had the idea for this. And I was gonna stay in Pereira but then I saw uh, Lauren's videos about uh, Armenia. And I thought it might be interesting to come up and see Armenia. So I just came up here, stay overnight, go back to Pereira the next day. Uh, met with Lauren, who's a wonderful guy. <laughs> and uh, we're talking about living in Colombia and uh, all the different things that are involved, particularly for an American like myself. So here I am. Are you thinking about living here um, for retirement? Yes. Yes, I should say, um, like many Americans, uh, I'm approaching retirement and I understand that uh, my dollar is going to go a lot further in a country like Colombia than it will in the United States. Um, I have some friends of mine who uh, have actually retired outside of the United States and uh, they had pretty good experiences. So I'm thinking about uh, Colombia. Uh, to be honest, like most Americans, I had pretty much written off Colombia as any place I'd want to live because of, you know, the history of the country over the last 20 or 30 years. And then in 2016, I heard the news report that the president of Colombia had been awarded the Nobel Prize, and that kind of got me interested. So I've been doing some research on the internet and uh, watching Lauren's videos, and I've read enough and heard enough that I thought it would be a good idea to actually come here and uh, see what it's like. Not a criminal on every corner like they portray. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a beautiful country. It's uh, it rains a lot, but uh, like some place like Ireland, the uh, the the other side of that is it's very green. It's very lush. It's very green. It's very beautiful. Uh, I find the people here to be very friendly um, and very polite. Um, I will say something, it, um, it really helps if you speak a little Spanish. Um, you don't, it's not a requirement, uh, you could probably visit here and get by very fine without Spanish, but I think you will enjoy your time here more, you're going to be able to connect with the Colombian people and understand more about them if you speak a little Spanish. You don't have to read uh, 100 Years of Solitude in the original, but, uh, you know, just basic conversation, hello, how are you, what's your name, what do you do, where do you live, things like that. Uh, it, it, goes, it goes a long way because I think the people here, they appreciate that, if you make that effort. Um, yeah, to speak I don't think, personally, I don't think, uh, depending on the person themselves, that you don't have to know Spanish when you get here, but I completely agree with you that as time goes on, you really need to keep working at it. Yeah. And, and as you do, your life becomes more fulfilled. Yeah. You know, until then, you have to expect that you're going to have a lot of alone time. Yeah. And, and poor communication, unless you're skyping back home or something. <laughs> you know, I was. Yeah. You know, I was telling you that I'll go months without speaking a word of English, and then somebody comes along and it just like gush. Can't stop because <laughs> yeah, because it's been so long. Yeah. Uh, but that's a good thing because you learn faster that way. Yeah. No, don't let it stop you. 
uh, come and uh, see what it's like. It's it's a wonderful country. So have you looked at any other place other than Colombia? Um, no, I haven't actually. I thought I kind of thought about Asia, but that's too far, a little too strange for me. And uh, obviously, Europe is probably even more expensive than the United States. Um, other countries in South America. Uh, I've been to Buenos Aires a couple of times. I love Buenos Aires. It's a beautiful city, but it's a long way to go. And the airline tickets there, it's it's like eighteen hundred dollars round trip or something like that. Whereas I could I could travel to Colombia three times for what it would cost me to travel to Buenos Aires once. So I like Colombia. It's because of its geographic location, its climate. Um, it's on. It, it's interesting. It's on the equator, but when you're up high, 4,000, 5,000 feet, it's not hot. You don't feel like it's a tropical heat. I suppose if you go down to the Caribbean coast, then you know Cartagena or someplace, Ooh. you're going to feel that. But here in um, here in Armenia, you don't feel it at all. It's very cool. It's very nice. So climate's good. The geographic location. It's accessible to the states if I want to get back for some reason, if I have to get back, or if I want my family to come visit. So, yeah. So, what has been the most striking to you when you got off the plane in Colombia? What stood out the most to you as being different? Well, I'm not sure about getting off the plane, but I know the most striking thing is the beauty of the country, I think. Um, also, I, I arrived in Medellin, and I stayed in a neighbor, neighborhood called El Poblado, which is kind of like the high rent district. Yeah. And what struck me is how much it looks like the United States. They have big shopping malls, all the major brands are there, um, all the clothing designers have stores there. There's a McDonald's, there's a Burger King, there's a Domino's, there's everything. You, I mean, you, you would think you were living in the United States somewhere. Okay, uh, but you have to have a little more money to live there than you would in some place like Armenia. So, from El Poblado, uh, you can go to different parts of the city, and you're going to see a big difference in the living standard in some of the barrios. Uh, clearly, people don't make as much money there. Uh, a lot of people live in cinder block houses in Medellin. There's whole neighborhoods like that. So there's a big difference in living standards, even in the same city like that. Um, I find the people to be very friendly, and they're very polite. They say please, they say thank you, good morning, good day, how are you, I'm fine. Uh, which is kind of a nice change from the United States, where they just say, give me that. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so that's kind of nice, that kind of stands out. So is there anything that you would caution anyone coming here? Like I know that you were trying to get bus schedules off the internet, for example. Oh, well, it's true, yeah, things... I guess I would say, as an American, I'm used to... Time is money in the United States, okay? You don't want to waste time because you're wasting money. You expect things to work, you expect things to arrive on time, everything is supposed to happen when it's supposed to, this is the way life is supposed to be, right? So if you're going to come here and live here or just come to visit, you have to kind of accept the fact it's a different culture. Um, life is a little slower here. Uh, things sort of happen when they have, I mean, people do their best. They are professional, but um, things don't always happen necessarily when or how they're supposed to. So you have to kind of, uh, as, as Clint Eastwood would say, you have to improvise, adapt, and overcome. <laughs> <laughs> point. That's what I would say. And if I, I would say also, if, if you can't do that, if you don't like being out of your comfort zone, then you should probably stay at home. That's the best thing to do. Yeah, yeah, because you're not going to change it. You're not going to change the people. And if it really bothers you, you're going to go crazy. Right. I had to adjust. I was always type A. I've always <laughs> worked multiple jobs. And yeah. the thing that to this day I struggle with is people arriving on time. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, it's it's kind of like what happened this morning, okay? I was I was going to take a bus to come to Armenia, 
And I thought I would reserve it on the internet. I thought, well, I'll just go online and I'll buy a ticket and I'll be all set to go. And the, there, there were no buses available for some reason. And one of the main float to Occidental, the website was down. I couldn't even access it. And I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? I wrote to Lauren and he said, uh, he said, well, you just go down to the bus station and buy a ticket at, um, what was it, uh, the... What, what was the name of the bus service? Trans Armenia. Trans Armenia. So, so I leave it every five, yeah. ten minutes. So I went down to the bus station, I bought a ticket, I, I caught the bus at the last minute, and it all worked out. There was a lot of, you know, tense moments there, but finally it all worked out. There's a learning curve. Because yes, I wrote to I Lauren. Figured these things and out. And he told me which bus to take and where to take it, and I got it, and it was done. Yeah, <laughs> you know, once you know, life gets so much easier. Yeah. I actually love it too. I think it's a good way to live. I think in in America we we move too fast, and we 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 miss a lot because we're moving too fast. You ask about healthcare. Is there any other consideration that you have on your list of uh, what you're looking for here? Well, I think healthcare would be the most important, just because uh, none of us are getting any older, you know. Um, but it sounds like. Uh, Actually, I'm very impressed at how enlightened the Colombian government is uh, that a foreign citizen can come here and uh, obtain, a, obtain a visa and, and live just like a Colombian citizen and buy into the healthcare system uh, and, and use that. Um, I think that's great. I don't know too many countries that would do something like that. Yeah, it's pretty so it's, pretty it's pretty amazing. Um, I think that was my main concern. I think. Aside from that, I think everything is pretty much uh, self-evident. Now, cost of living, you mentioned a little bit about that, but um, you want to make your dollars go You want to make your dollars go further, so I've been able to talk to Lauren about that, and he's told me about what he pays for rent. And As far as the cost of food goes, I can see what people pay for food in the restaurants and, and the grocery store, and it's, uh, it's a lot less than what I would expect to pay uh, in the United States. So. I think the one thing I would be concerned about is clothing. Can you buy a size double X shirt in Colombia? In Colombia you can. Really? Yes. But you also have a ton of seamstresses and all you have to do is find out who the good ones are. And then they would make your it for local you. friend, they could just make it for you. Okay. They could duplicate everything that you're wearing. Okay. And pretty inexpensively. Because Labor, I would Labor imagine is cheap. I would imagine most of the clothing here is this made for the local Colombians, so... But here's the thing about Colombia, it, unlike Ecuador, for example, where people are just small in general. In Colombia, you could be Colombia. Really? They're, the look of a Colombian is anywhere from six foot five, blonde hair, blue eye, to four foot and a half indigenous. Okay, all right. It's, I see. There is no particular look here. Yeah. And so you're going to get a... a broader range of sizes plus the government is less restrictive about imports oh okay now i'm going to give a rule of thumb to the video watchers and, and to you okay when it comes to cost of living to equal a type of living that you would have in the united states here in armenia it's going to be one dollar to four dollars or one dollar to three dollars. So if you're spending three dollars, for example, it will cost you one dollar here. Yeah. In Medellin, it's going to be more like um, two to one. Half. Yeah. 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 It's going to be more like that. Medellin is considerably more expensive yeah. than Armenia or much of of Colombia, uh, but Medellin, Medellin is very inexpensive. You can live here on $1,000 a month. You can live really well here on anything over $1,400 a month. Now, Medellin, you really want to look at a couple thousand or better. Yeah. You know, unless you just want to, you know, eat cat food and stare at a TV all day long. <laughs> you know, it's like... Probably also important to mention that right now, the exchange rate is the highest it's been in, in a long time. So. I've never seen it as good okay. as it is. So... As, as an American, if you've got dollars to spend right now, your dollars buy a lot, but don't think it's going to stay like this forever. No, it, it goes up and down. Right now, somebody just asked me, so I'm answering you right now on this video. <laughs> they said, the difference in exchange rate, does it really make a lot of difference? Well, 
today, if you exchange $1,000, you're going to get an extra $200. When I got here uh, seven, eight months ago, I don't even know. Um, it was like 2800 right? It was about 2800 Yeah. And right now, uh, yesterday I looked, it was 3350 Yeah. But I calculated everything that I did, everything that I set up on 2500 because it doesn't really get much lower than that. $2,500. Uh, 2500 Colombian pesos to the dollar. Oh, okay. All right. So I calculated everything on that. So if it drops even as low as $2,500, I'm still okay. You're still safe. But everything over $2,800 just, just to a, me is a bonus. It's a bonus, yeah. So my rent when I got here was $287 a month in dollars, and right now it's just over $250. Yeah. So it's $30 less, more than $30 a month savings on rent. Yeah. Just because of the exchange rate. Well, let me put it this way. Um, I'm glad I came. I'm glad I invested uh, the time and the money and the effort uh, to make the trip down here. And I'm also, I'm glad I met uh, Lauren because he has a lot of very specific information about living in Columbia. So you should contact him for one of his consultations, okay? And the check's in the mail, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so if, if you're serious about retiring outside of the United States and you want to find a place where your dollar will go further and it's not too far away, uh, convenient to get to, uh, you might want to think about Colombia.